What's going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about some more NBA news with you guys. And in today's video, I actually want to talk about the recent reports and rumors that actually suggest that the Cleveland Cavaliers are interested in potentially signing Denzel Valentine in free agency. According to this report, it says, according to sources, the Cavaliers have some interest in off-injured Denzel Valentine, who is said to be healthy right now. The Cavs will reportedly continue to discuss the bottom of the barrel wings and probably that probably wouldn't cost a mid-level exception. And this is all being reported by Chris Fedor of Cleveland.com. So, again, he's one of the biggest sources we know. The Cavs are... I don't know what they're trying to do. I don't know what their direction is right now in terms of signing players because when we look at their when we look at their team right now their team is legitimately it's pretty full like they went into this off season kind of not really having too many roster spots to kind of fill out like you look you looked at Dali you know he left but would they would they have to replace him you know they I don't know if they really even did they I don't think they've really replaced his spot yet in fact, currently on their team, they do have Colin Sexton, Darius Garland, Ricky Rubio, Damian Dotson still there, Isaac Okoro, Jetty Osmond, Dylan Winler, Kevin Love, Larry Nance, Kevin Galley, uh, Dean Wade, Stevens, and Allen, and Mobley. So I believe that's like 14 or 15 players. They don't really have a roster spot available right now. Which is the really weird thing because like this team has needed to improve for so long and they just like haven't at all. And I, I still feel like they they really do need to go out there. In my opinion, if I was the Cavs, I would I think by the deadline, I think they're gonna trade Larry Nance. You know, Larry Nance has done so much for this team, but it's honestly time for, you know, mutual parties that he moves on, I think. You know, they'll probably trade him for a first round pick. Kevin Love, I think, will get bought out next season. So, that's another roster spot. Jetty Osman, I think, will get... I think he's either going to get waived or I think he's going to get traded. Um, I don't know how that's going to go. And then you, of course, look at... You know, so you got those three who I don't think will be on the team for much longer. Damian Dotson, he will not be on the team much longer. Ricky Rubio will be a... He's going to be a free agent, as most of you guys know. I don't know if Kevin Galley will do much. Winler, um, you know, his roster spot's hanging by a thread. There's about six or seven players who probably won't be there next season that the Cavs are going to have to work around, get maybe some new players in. That's even if they're looking to still trade Colin Sexton. So, I, another reason why they probably can't get Denzel Valentine right now is because they've also got Isaiah Hartenstein to re-sign. Now, I think what they're going to be doing is, I think by the time this summer league's done, I wouldn't be surprised if they waived Damian Dotson and Cabin Gully. So then, you know, Damian Dotson can go on a free agency. He probably was going to get waived eventually. He probably knows this. And then Cabin Gully's just... I don't know, he's kind of average that they signed to a deal, which I think he should be more of a two-way player, but he's just not on a two-way contract. I think Broderick Thomas is on that two-way deal, and I don't know who else is. I'm pretty sure that Jemiah Martin is, but he's not going to be... Uh, I don't think he'll be on the roster for much longer if I'm being completely honest. So, who knows? By, by the time, like, they do this, they might have two roster spots available. Well, I think one will go to Isaiah Hartenstein uh, because I think they'll want to bring him back. He'll probably just come back on the minimum. Um, and then the second one, who knows who that's going to go to? I think players will be fighting for that contract. And who knows? Denzel Valentine might be a good depth guy to come in, you know, just be like a 10th to 15th man. You know, just come in here and there if a wing player gets injured or something like that. That will probably be the thing. And then they'll probably work to free agency next season where they'll they'll look at making some moves here and there. I'm pretty sure Broderick Thomas is still going to want to keep on a two-way contract. He showed some things in Summer League. So he still might be in a right play. Yeah. Uh, but Denzel Valentine, that's going to be interesting to see. And whether or not a Colin Sexton trade is going to unfold or not yet yeah, because... I think a Colin Sexton trade to the Knicks almost almost happened, but it just didn't. So, the reason I, I still don't know if Colin Sexton will get traded or not is just based on the fact that if you look at his you know, stats, he's got insane stats, like 24 points per game, I believe. But 
it's almost like he's also hindering back Darius Garland's development. And like anyone who's watched the Cavs know that Garland's going to be a far better player in the future. Um, and Colin Sexton just doesn't really fit at that shooting guard position. I think the Cavs are looking to move Isaac Okoro there and then just sign a genuine, like, small forward in free agency because Okoro, I feel like Okoro is better at guarding players that are his height or smaller. You know, I know it was only his first season, but even against Jalen Green in the G League, um, in the, uh, Summer League, rather, who's like six foot six, six foot seven. Jalen Green tore apart Isaac Okoro, and it was like his first game, and Okoro had played like a whole entire season, so I think they're going to want to move Okoro to the shooting guard position and bring in a genuine small forward. A player that they have been very interested in is actually Cam Reddish, who I think as well would be insane for this Cleveland Cavaliers team. I would love to get Cam Reddish so much. I think he could be an absolute beast, and if he keeps improving that jump shot, dude's a beast defender like a legitimately insane defender who i think has been starved of opportunity right now on this atlanta hawks team and i think things might continue to remain like that i don't know if they'll ever give him like you know big amount of minutes like especially considering they have bogdan bogdanovich at that you know two you got deandre uh hunter at the one kevin herter is your backup two probably and then they've been like given you know, minutes here and there to, like, veterans like Solomon Hill, uh, Tony Snell, I believe, but, again, I'm not even too sure if both of them are on the roster, I think Tony Snell signed with Portland, so, look, I, I think Herda, I think, you know, Reddish will continue to get the same amount of minutes he's been getting, you know, the 26, 28 minutes per game, but I'm not too sure if he'll be as much next season, like, his three-point percentage is still kind of bad, like it's 26%, but he does take a lot of shots and does seem like it's improving. He's averaging 11 points per game, four rebounds, and could be one of the best defenders in the league. He's six foot seven. I think it'd be great for the Cleveland Cavaliers to go get, if I was the Cavs, I know, I know that the, um, you know, Hawks are looking to try and trade him for like some picks and stuff. If I was the Cavs, I would definitely be, you know, bringing up the case, like, what would it take? Could we give you Jetty Osman and, you know, a protected first, who knows, in 2023. Oh, not a protected first, an unprotected first round pick. Because, like, if you're genuinely doing that, so you go in, you take a good player at, in the 2022 draft, I don't think this team really needs to draft any more first round pick players after 2022, uh, you know, in the top 10. So, I think you kind of risk being bad for a player like Cam Reddish, because Cam Reddish could be an absolute freak. Plus, you can get rid of, like, Jetty Osman's contract. And the Hawks would do this because they guarantee, they pretty much get probably a top 15 pick if the Cavs don't improve that much. And the pick could legitimately be, if the Cavs still remain bad, a top 5 pick. But I don't think it will. I think they know it'll be, like, a, a top 10 pick. And, look, I think the Hawks will like that because they can go and trade for a star or something with that pick. So, again, it kind of works all ways. And let's just say, who knows, the Cavs draft maybe a, a wing player or a power forward maybe, then it'd be kind of, I think they'd go for a wing player because I think they're going to keep Mobley at that power forward position um, permanently. But like if you draft a wing player in, you know, in the 2022 draft and you're able to trade trade for like Cam Reddish, then maybe you go out in free agency and get like, you know, some shooters and stuff to put around this team. I think it'd be pretty insane. And then what they do with Colin Sex and I guess will be kind of, left to the mystery, but let's just say, who knows, they trade, maybe they trade Sexton to get picks to use for Cam Reddish, that could be an idea, right, because I know Cam Reddish is probably a better fit for this team than Colin Sexton in the long-term run, if you look at it, right, you could legitimately have a starting role, you know, starting team of Darius Garland at point guard, who by this time will probably be like 23, 24, heading into his prime, um, and then your, st your starting shooting guard, could be like, you know, Isaac Okoro, who I think will be like 22, 21. Small forward, Cam Reddish, could be like 2024, 20, 2023, 20, uh, 24 rather, 23 maybe. Evan Mobley will still be there, you know, 21 probably. And Jarrett Allen, it could be like 25. That's an insane starting five that should look to try and burst to make the playoffs. And then off the bench, you could legitimately have that wing play you've just drafted. Um, and just go sign like a bunch of players in free agency. That team would be kind of insane. That's kind of what the future looks like, I think, for the Cleveland Cavaliers in the long term. That could be, like, a, a possible thing to maybe see. But I guess it's all, you know, 
up to opinion now it's very subjective what's all gonna happen of course i'd very much like to hear all of your thoughts and opinions on this down below of course don't forget to subscribe to my channel for all the latest nba content and nba news of course don't forget to subscribe to my gaming channel and my iro slash long channels and don't forget to check out my podcast as well if you haven't already which i will all be linking in the description down below you know but as i was saying I want to thank you guys for watching. Leave your comments down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.